Ever wondered how long decks of cards are used in casinos before they're thrown away? In Las Vegas, decks can last for up to 12 hours before being discarded or sold. This is done in order to stop any distinguishing marks, such as bends and scuffs, from giving the game away to players looking to gain an advantage. This means that an individual casino can spend anywhere from $50,000 to $180,000 each year on poker cards, which is a lot of cards. Keep in mind that on average in the United States, each household has at least one deck of cards, which means each year, over 100 million decks of cards are produced. So how are these poker cards made? And how do these manufacturers produce enough volume to meet demand? Before we dive into the process of how poker cards are mass-produced, make sure to subscribe to the channel, or during your next trip to the casino, you'll lose everything. Betting starts with Peter Griffin. Oh, he's not looking at much of anything right now. And those mirrored sunglasses, not doing him any favors. All in. Poker cards begin their journey as card manufacturers carefully select materials that have the perfect balance of strength and flexibility. The cardstock is often made from two layers of paper glued together to create the desired thickness. To give the cards that signature feel, paper arrives at the manufacturing facility on large rolls. These rolls are so heavy that they need to be carried by a forklift. Each of these large rolls will print approximately 10,000 decks of cards. As these rolls are loaded onto machinery, the printer glues two of the rolls of paper together through a machine, which gives the cards their needed thickness to withstand ample handling. This also provides opacity, so the designs don't show through from the other side. Before the poker cards can be produced, skilled artists design the deck's graphics. The graphics can range from the standard simple casino-style cards to unique prints with a cohesive theme across the cards. Again, the art can be visually appealing, but still must follow rules for playability. After the initial artwork is completed, the card designs must be converted into digital files. The original physical drawings and paintings are scanned or photographed using high-resolution settings. Artists may also create the designs directly on the computer using digital illustration software. The images are saved in a vector format that can be resized without losing quality. This allows the graphics to be precisely scaled to real-world card dimensions. The digital card graphics are then etched onto metal plates. This traditional printing technique provides crisp, accurate reproductions. Each color in the design has a separate metal plate. The graphics are carefully laser etched into the plates, resulting in raised surfaces that will hold ink. The plates are then coated and installed on the printing press. With the etched plates prepared, the printing process can begin. The cardstock is fed into large industrial printing presses. As the metal plates rotate, the etched design areas pick up ink and transfer it onto the cardstock. For designs that have multiple colors, the cardstock will pass through separate plates to complete the design. Quality control checks are conducted to ensure consistency across the full run, resulting in high volumes of accurately printed cards. Once the cards are printed, they undergo a heating process to permanently set the ink. The freshly printed cards pass under high-powered heat lamps or through drying tunnels. These heat sources cure and dry the specialized printing inks, preventing smudging, fading, or rubbing off during shuffling and gameplay. Proper curing also locks in the vibrant colors and crisp details of the graphics. After heating, a protective coating is applied to give the cards a smooth, polished finish. Different finishes can be used to impact the look and feel. A varnish or lacquer finish provides gloss and sheen. Wax coatings give the cards a soft luster. Linen or textured finishes emulate fabric and aid in card handling. The cards then move on to the cutting process. The cardstock is precisely cut by specialized machines into individual cards of uniform size. The cutting uses extremely sharp blades for clean edges and has adjustable guides to ensure consistent card dimensions. The cards are cleanly punched out of the printed sheets in rapid succession. Some machines separate the cards into stacks sorted by suit and number. This high-tech, automated cutting improves efficiency while precision provides quality assurance. Next, the freshly cut cards have their corners rounded for a smooth, polished edge. The cards are fed through rounding machines that apply controlled pressure to bend the stiff paperboard corners. This requires finely tuned equipment to avoid tearing the cardstock. These rounded corners give the deck a refined look we all know while also improving handling, allowing the cards to easily pivot and glide during shuffling. 
At this final stage, the rounded cards are assembled and packaged into card boxes. The cards are collated, shuffled, and stacked by machine. They are then inserted into a pre-printed cardboard box designed to match the deck theme. An interior cellophane wrap adds moisture protection. The shrink-wrapped boxes are bundled together for distribution and sale. Rigorous quality checks are conducted on the finished products. Each card is inspected to ensure flawless printing, cutting, coating, and assembly. Only a perfect deck that meets stringent standards is packaged and shipped to the customer. This final step culminates in a high-quality, polished deck ready for purchase and play. These 3.5 by 2.5 inch cards are responsible for generating over tens of billions of dollars in revenue each year. Magicians have been proving this for years at this point. But from the manufacturing process to the global impact, next time you look at a deck of cards, remember that there is so much more than meets the eye.